Hey everyone, welcome to the 10th and final part of my three style tutorial and this is going to be on big cube centers. Um, so there are three kinds of centers and they all, the commutators for them all follow the same basic patterns. Um, so here we go. So the most basic kind of center is the X center um, and they're called that because on the 5x5 five five they form the X and the plus centers are the ones that form the plus. So, um, uh, so this is, I mean, I'm just gonna teach uh, the normal, I'm gonna teach ed, uh, center commutators basically from the X centers, um, and, then, and then I'm gonna show how the same concepts apply to everything else. So basically there are only two kinds of center commutators. Um, I'm saying like within any of the sets. Uh, you've got the ones where they're all three centers that you're trying to cycle are on different faces. Uh, I'm sorry, there are three kinds, really. You've got the ones where all three of the ones you're trying to cycle are on, are on adjacent faces. You've got the ones where two are on opposite faces and one is somewhere in here. And then you've got the ones where two are on one face and the third is on another face. Um, so the easiest are the ones where all three of them are on adjacent faces. Um, and basically what you do is you just need to have an interchange between two of them and and then you can just insert into the third one very easily. So for example, um, if I want to put this to there and this to there, um, I can see easily I have an, have an interchange like this, um, right? And then my insertion uh, is going to be like that. To, because as you can see, it inserts this into there. So uh, an insertion always consists of, so an interchange for um, X centers is always a slice move, but an insertion is a slice, a layer, and then a slice back. Um, and that's pretty intuitive because that's just how it works to insert this into there. Um, so to go back, this to there, here's my interchange, and here, and here is um, the insertion, just to put this in there, it's just like that. Um, and so really, these commutators, when they're all on adjacent faces, are extremely easy. I being a very sort of automatic person, um, I always create my interchange in the e-slice, um, or in one of the e-slices, uh, and this is just to simplify things, so like, for example, um, if I get a, if I get a case like, let's see, okay, so if I get a case like this, um, right here to here, uh, yeah, here to here to here, um, I could use this interchange here and have a nice eight mover with an insertion like that. However, what I would do is I would just do an L2 to create an interchange like this and then, and then insert uh, like that and then undo that. Um, and the only other thing to look out for is, is uh, situations like this. Um, okay, so I know, I know that in this situation I could, I have this interchange and I could insert it here but um, let's say I had to insert it, insert it from into this spot. I would just do a U2 setup move to make this insertion a little bit easier. Um, and so, if you want tips on memorizing these centers, you can watch my uh, four blind video on the Cubing World channel. Um, this is really just about the commutators themselves, which are pretty easy. Um, so, and when you have two on opposite faces. Uh, it's basically just the same thing except your interchange, except that the double turn must be the interchange and it must be, and it, the interchange layer, of course, must not include the top, the, not, or not necessarily the top, but where you insert into. <laughs> I said the top because I always, I always use the top as the piece outside the interchange. Um, so for example, uh, you get a case like this and you and you just make sure right you could you can't like try to solve it like uh, like with it, this interchange 
because then the interchange will cut the uh, will cut through the layer with the third piece. So it has to be like this. Um, and then, so for me, uh, the only case, the only case where I have, uh, where I have to not have my interchange be on the e-slice is when I've got a D-layer, um, when I've got a D-layer, uh, target. And in that case, I just, I just go through and, and I just set it up so that it's interchangeable with whichever whichever buffer I'm currently using on the top layer, uh, and then I'll just insert uh, one of the whatever wherever the third target is into that layer. Um, and so and so that's really it for the, the those two kinds of those two normal kinds of center commutators. Uh, they're pretty easy to get used to. There are a lot of ways to make them very automatic. Um, so the way I make them automatic is I just always have my interchange or as often as I can be in the e, e slices. Another way to do it is just to always set up to the same spot. For example, I could just no matter where on this on any of these faces uh, my target is, I could just always set up to top right and then always end up with a commutator. So like if I get a case like, okay, let's see. Like if I get a case like this, I have this interchange and I could just solve it with that interchange. I would just need a, a U setup move to make the insertion possible. Or if you wanted to have a more automatic approach, you could just set this one up to top right, set this one up to top right, and then just go from there. And then the only thing you have to remember is which order you set them up in. Um, and so that's not too difficult either. Uh, so the last kind of commutator is just between two faces, have, having like two on one face and one on another. Um, and so this is this is a, the easiest way to do a two swap of centers. Um, and so they all look like this. Um, there you go. And and so that's you're probably familiar with that from solving big cubes. Um, and you might at, you might be wondering, well, doesn't that just swap two centers? Well, if you do it again, you can see that it actually doesn't. It actually swaps this center, this center, and this center. And so then, when you do it a third time, you cycle them back. Um, so I don't. I only use this if I have a two swap uh, during a center cycle. Um, but if you are using a fixed buffer rather than uh, a floating buffer like I use, then those can be extremely powerful in order to cycle, in order to cycle pieces around the top layer. And this obviously works for double layers too. Um, and so the the easiest way to think about it is just is just like this is your this is your um, interchange sort. Uh, the easiest way to think about it is that the layer that you're doing the like u u prime u u prime on is not the layer that will that will have the two being cycled on it. So if you play around with those, it's pretty easy to figure out the directions of those commutators. Um, so if you're using a floating buffer, you shouldn't need those because because when you get to a piece on your buffer layer, you just move on to the next buffer instead of like cycling through it. Um, and so in that case, all you have to know is that is which piece you need to be solved in order for that to work. So like if I get uh, if I get this case, for example, I know that if I want to swap these two, I need this one to be solved. And if this one is not solved, then I could just flip it around. If I, for example, if I know this one's solved, I can flip it around and go like that too. Um, yeah, so really the most important thing for centers is figuring out whatever system works best for you. So moving on to the 5x5, five five, um, you've got one set of X centers, which work just like the 4x4 four four X centers, and then you've got a set of plus centers. So whereas X centers only use, the only slice moves for X centers are, are sort of wing slices, plus centers use a combination of wing slices and... Uh, and uh, middle and middle layer slices, um, and so the easiest, and so that's the easiest way to think about it is that you're going to need either. 
So just like how for edges on the three by three, you need you need to have um, one of your insertion. You need to have one of your insertion or your interchange to be a slice. On a five by five, you need one of your insertion or your interchange to involve a middle slice, and you need uh, your and you need one of your interchange or insertion to involve an outer slice. So an example of a commutator where the insertion uses the outer slice and the interchange uses the inner slice would be like here to here to here, where I could just insert that in there with an outer slice and then use the middle slice to go through and then put it back. So you can see how that works is the is the uh, is the interchange is on the middle slice and the insertion is on the outer slice. So. Um, And then I could, of course, construct another commutator where the interchange, like so here to here to here, the interchange is on the, is on the, uh, is on a outer slice. And then the interchange, and then the insertion has to be on the, has to be on the middle slice. Um, and so that's basically it. I find the freedom that you get in, in plus centers uh, very nice, and I actually find them easier than X centers. All the tricks that I showed you for X centers can apply just as easily to plus centers. Um, all the things about making it more automatic, floating buffers, um, and then of course when you want to do the cycles with um, swaps on the same layer, you just have to have again a a outer slice and a middle slice that you're using. Um, and so the thing about big cube centers is that everyone needs to learn to understand them in their own way. I have, I have my own way that I understand them and it works very well for me. Um, but if you play around with them a little bit, uh, you can develop an understanding, uh, doing sighted solves for centers. It's very good. Um, and then the last kind of centers, uh, are obliques. Um, and they look like this, and obliques are just obliques are just like wings, uh, and they're very very annoying because you have two sets of obliques. Um, you have one set that is like here, 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 and like here, 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 um, and and one that's on the other one of each one. So it's it's like solving the wings twice. Um, because you have to solve the ones on one kind of side, and then you have to solve the ones on the other side. So using your knowledge of wings from the 4x4 can help you, because you can have the ones that are like your 4x4 wings, and then you can have the ones that are on kind of the other side than your 4x4 wings. Um, and so... And so, yeah, that's that's basically it. So oblique um, oblique commutators uh, always involve either one of the insertion or the interchange involving an outer slice and one of the insertion or the interchange involving the inner slice, um, just like on the five by five uh, with the um, with the plus centers. Um, and those so those are the three kinds of centers. Um, a, so a 4x4 has just X centers, uh, a 5x5 has a set of X centers and a set of plus centers, um, a 6x6 has, uh, two sets of X centers and two sets of obliques, um, and a 7x7 has two sets, two sets of X centers, um, two sets of plus centers, and two sets of obliques. Um, so that's a lot of centers to solve. Um, and that's it. If you're curious about memorization um, for centers, you can check out my video on Cubing World. I'll link it in the description. Um, that I guess that's the end of my entire 10-part tutorial. I hope this video is helpful for you and all the other ones. Um, Leave your comments, tell me what you do understand, didn't understand, and give me your suggestions for future tutorials. I'll try and answer every question that comes my way. Um, and also tell me if uh, you were able to learn three style using my videos. Uh, thanks for watching.